Uh, hello again, folks. This is Dr. David. Welcome to tonight's webinar with James Spencer on glutathione and cancer. Before we begin, I, I want to read out this quote because I love it. As knowledge with regards to the effects of food upon man increases, it is more than conceivable that the races that first avail themselves of the new values of nutrition, these races may decrease the handicaps of disease, lengthen their lives, and so become the leaders of the future. And I tell you what, we are finding out more and more fascinating information about uh, nutrition, especially when it comes to uh, that master antioxidant called glutathione. And before I hand this over to James, I'm just going to read out his short bio. James Spencer is considered by many to be an expert in the field of natural sciences. He has developed expertise in the field of glutathione enhancement therapy by working as a pharmaceutical represent representative for a company that has pioneered this research. For the last 12 years or more, Mr. Spencer has worked closely with Immunotech of Montreal, Canada to educate and promote the, on the benefits of glutathione augmentation. He has collaborated with numerous doctors across North America and has helped set up some of the ongoing trials associated with this technology. Mr. Spencer is often heard on radio and television and regularly speaks to large audiences throughout the United States and Canada on the subjects of health and anti-aging. And for those of you who were on last time when he spoke, you you know that you are in for another treat. So uh, without much further ado, Mr. Spencer, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. And uh, we are looking forward to this presentation. Over to you. Aha. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to do something first. Uh, James, we didn't hear you for the first few minutes because can you, you hear were, me now. We can hear you now. Go ahead. Okay, good. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. David, and welcome all of you on the phone lines tonight uh, and on the webinar. Um, tonight, we're going to focus on one aspect of protecting your health, and that is the um, the advantage of using glutathione to protect you from cancer. Uh, and what are the benefits of glutathione modulation if you have cancer? Uh, now, first of all, one of the reasons why glutathione in general is in peril is because of the times that we're living in. Because of the uh, huge amount of uh, air pollution uh, and other forms of pollution affecting the, the, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, uh, the Earth has had uh, a lot of change. This change has not been to our benefit. Uh, it's increased uh, free radical damage very, very dramatically in the last 25 years to 35 years. Uh, food quality, of course, is, uh, is getting worse because they're spraying three times more pesticides than they did uh, 30 years ago. Stress levels are at an all-time high. And, of course, uh, illness is manifest in very, very many ways. We have uh, diseases that we did not have. Uh, nor did we even think we would have. Uh, sometimes uh, it uh, just results from someone getting on an airplane and flying in from another country and sneezing, and uh, another plague has started in another part of the world. We've uh, been very carefully watching uh, the bird flu. It's still uh, doing damage in uh, areas like Cambodia, Vietnam. But it still has not mutated to where it's contagious, uh, or else this would have been probably the worst thing to ever hit mankind. I had a taste of it with a swine flu, uh, or H1N1, but uh, this demonstrated what can happen when uh, there is a mutation of a disease that starts with an animal or a bird and then uh, transmits over to humans. Uh, we're still plagued by uh, superbugs that uh, are developing, and there's new ones that have developed uh, just recently in India, uh, one particularly in New Delhi. And uh, these are very resistant to antibiotics, and uh, they're causing great concern. Also, as you get older, uh, more medicines are being uh, prescribed, and the complication of medicines are that uh, these medicines are, are not alkaline, they're acidic. In fact, uh, there's really not any 
uh, medicine that's alkaline. So as you take more and more medications, you become more acidic, and that means more likely to get a degenerative disease. And that, of course, presents another complication uh, in the fact that degenerative disease is now such a, uh, a growing threat. And so it is that you're more likely to be in a hospital or a nursing home as you get older. Now, a lot of this is ameliorated, and uh, that's uh, by having a very strong immune system. So uh, the effects of uh, a strong immune system, of course, can allow us to uh, uh, fight off bacterial infections, viruses, uh, parasites, fungus, uh, the different pollution and drugs that we're exposed to. but. Not everyone knows that the immune system actually can uh, serve as a protection against cancer itself. And uh, this is what we're going to focus on tonight, the fact that <coughs> having a strong immune system is the first step toward uh, defeating this, uh, this horrible menace that we're now facing. Cancer, of course, is now the number one killer in the United States. And its dramatic increase is probably directly related to immune system function. Now, 100 years ago, the top three causes of death in the United States were pneumonia and influenza, number one. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Tuberculosis was number two, and diarrhea was number three. Now, fast forward to today, and you'll find that the top three causes of death in the United States are now number one, cancer number two, heart attacks, and number three, stroke. Now, <clears throat> this means that there's been a huge change, uh, a paradigm shift in, in, in illness. And so it is that uh, about approximately one out of every two people now in the United States are going to get cancer. That's a frightening uh, statistic. Well, if I was to ask the general public, what are they doing? to help shore up their immune system and to help protect them, a lot of times you'll, you'll just get a blank stare. They really don't know that there is something that you could do. And uh, in point of fact, uh, many doctors will point out that uh, these five elements are something that could be done. Uh, and I'd love to say that everyone on the phone tonight is doing all of this. You have that good diet. You're eating your 8 to 12 uh, fruits and vegetables every day. You're sleeping your 8 or 9 hours. You're exercising 30 to 60 minutes every day. You have perfect control of, me uh, of stress, and your lifestyle is enviable. You, uh, you don't smoke. You don't uh, drink heavily. You uh, wave goodbye to McDonald's as you go past it. But the truth is that uh, very few people have the ability to do all five of these perfectly. But let's say for the sake of conversation that you actually were able to do it perfectly. And you were a model citizen. In actuality, the number one thing that you needed is not even on this list. And that's called raising your glutathione levels. Uh, you would think that, uh, generally speaking, this would be something that the doctor would have put right on the list. But generally speaking, the doctor is not really aware of the huge convergence of glutathione and immune system function. But glutathione is, uh, is critical to the immune system. Now, first of all, it's uh, a very small molecule that exists in every cell of your body, and it's very powerful in its protection of the cell. It uh, can only allow uh, legitimate things to come into the cell and go out of the cell. And it protects and hinders uh, bad things from getting into the cell. Now the components that uh, fuel the formation of glutathione are the three amino acids, glycine, glutamate, and cysteine. But the rate limiting factor is cysteine. It is the real decider uh, as to whether you are making glutathione and making sufficient amounts of glutathione. Now, there's been a lot of uh, change over the years in, with regards to the research being done on glutathione. And uh, 
20 years ago, you could count them probably on two hands. But the truth is that uh, in the last half a dozen years, it's gone into tens of thousands of studies. In fact, it's, it's approaching 100,000 studies now. You could go to PubMed and type in glutathione and, and you'd die of old age before you could read all the research that's now available on glutathione. Uh, but one of the gentlemen that uh, made the uh, research available and opened the pathway to research on glutathione was Dr. Gustavo Bunas. And in his research, he found out that without glutathione, our immune system can't function. As glutathione levels drop, our ability to fight off disease also declines. <coughs> now, Bunos was a very brilliant man, uh, but in spite of his intelligence, he was the first to admit that he accidentally discovered how to help humans and animals to make more glutathione. Uh, he was awarded uh, a lot of prestigious uh, awards over the years. In fact, he's considered one of the top 30 scientists in the history of Canada and won the Medal of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada uh, at the age of 36. And he was made a career investigator of the Medical Research Council and a lifetime member of the Research Council of Canada. Interestingly, in 1978, he began to study proteins. It was a, uh, a pet subject of his. He uh, wanted to find the perfect protein. And in the course of, of doing this, he was feeding uh, control groups of mice um, proteins from all over the world. And it was close to 100 different groups uh, of mice. But um, right at uh, a serendipitous moment, a company in Europe mailed him a big box of protein powder and told him that it was a, uh, a byproduct of their industry and that they had been discarding it, throwing it away. They wanted to know if there was any value to this powder. And uh, in the course of uh, feeding this to mice, Bunos learned that uh, there was something in this protein powder that was uh, having a remarkable effect on the mice. First of all, in the first few weeks, he noticed that they were more energetic. Uh, within a few months, he, he noticed they weren't getting sick like uh, mice in the other control groups. And uh, over a two-year period, he made a discovery that uh, these mice weren't dying like the other control groups. And so they actually outlived all of the other control groups by 30 to 50 percent. Now, that would get a research scientist very excited to find a, a powder that you could feed to an animal that could uh, make it live 50 percent longer. I'm sure those of you listening in tonight would agree you'd get excited if I told you that there was a powder uh, that could do that. But tonight we're not focusing on anti-aging. We'll talk about anti-aging on another one of our webinars. Tonight we're talking about cancer. And uh, that was the interesting uh, aspect. He, uh, he decided to do another study with the powder. And this time, he injected all the control groups with a chemical that causes cancer, dimethylhydrazine. He eventually wrote a paper on it. It was published and peer-reviewed uh, worldwide. And uh, interestingly, uh, all of the control groups developed cancer except the mice eating this white powder. And uh, that was of extreme interest to him because uh, he, he didn't know what was causing it, but he knew there was something in the powder that was doing this. And so it was that uh, over the next 10 years, he was able to isolate that it was a, a very rare amino acid cysteine that was actually causing the mice to upregulate a substance called glutathione. And, uh, Again, this was all found out by accident, but it led to the huge amount of research that's been done uh, up to this date. Now, glutathione uh, has uh, a host of benefits. Uh, just to mention uh, the top five briefly, I use a, uh, an acronym, AN-IDEA. The AN stands for antioxidant, the I stands for immune support, the D stands for detoxification, the E, energy, and the A, anti-aging. 
Now, I spent a little more time on the antioxidant aspect because there is probably no greater antioxidant in your body besides glutathione. And interestingly, you can't eat glutathione. You have to make glutathione. So it's your body's very own antioxidant, and you make it as you need it. Now, inside your body, you have an antioxidant mechanism and an oxidant mechanism. The difference between the two is called your oxidative stress level. Now, if you're able to raise, um, uh, or if you have a high level of oxidative stress, your body is going to have increased inflammation. You age at a faster rate. You die sooner. On the other hand, if you can lower the oxygen level, what can happen is the opposite. Your inflammation decreases. You age at a slower rate, and you live longer. Now, inflammation, of course, is uh, under great scrutiny, as well as oxidative stress level. Uh, this huge amount of research being, it's a buzzword now, um, but the inflammation just uh, probably is the main reason why heart disease is so high on the list. In fact, it's number two and number three, and uh, it's the number one killer of women now, but essentially in um, the bloodstream, the lipids or the fats, known as cholesterol, uh, can oxidize either at a slow rate or a fast rate, depending on whether or not you've got a small enzyme in your body called glutathione peroxidase. Now, glutathione peroxidase inhibits the oxidation of lipids or fats. And uh, there's a whole host of benefits. Uh, on another occasion, we'll discuss the benefits of, uh, of demyelinating diseases, um, one of the premier ones, which is called multiple sclerosis, um, and, and how this can benefit that. But right now, we're going to focus on the fact that uh, the number two and number three killer can be greatly controlled by simply raising glutathione, raising glutathione peroxidase, helping control this uh, oxidative process, which leads to the formation of plaque. And of course, if the plaque gets uh, all the way across an artery and blocks it, you have a heart attack. If it ruptures, you get a blood clot, you get a stroke. Either way, it's, it's being caused by this oxidation. Now, inside of your body, the um, stable molecule, which is called uh, H2O, there's two H's and an O, and you, re you probably recognize that H2O is water. Uh, and the OH molecule is the unstable molecule. Now, this one is uh, caused simply by breathing and by eating. Um, it's a byproduct of energy, a, by, a byproduct of, uh, of the cell producing energy. And so you can produce OH molecules right inside of your cells. You can also produce OH molecules uh, in your lungs, uh, in your stomach, throughout your body. And because it's missing a hydrogen molecule, it will do anything it can to steal a hydrogen molecule to make itself whole. And um, of course, what that does is that affects the other cells where you, it would steal hydrogen from it. Now, typically antioxidants such as uh, vitamin C and vitamin E and vitamin B, B1, B2, B6, B12, they pass off hydrogen to OH molecules and convert it from OH to H2O. But the downside of uh, a regular antioxidant vitamin like vitamin C and vitamin E is that when they lose their hydrogen, now they have to be uh, taken out of the body. And so uh, these vitamins can last a very short time. Now, an exception to that is the antioxidant glutathione because the GSH can pass an H to an OH molecule. Um, it does so on a regular basis extracellularly and intracellularly, but very critical is the fact that it does it inside of the cell. Now, this is the only antioxidant that the body does not have to get rid of. It reduces down into what's called GSSG, 
uh, which is a, a reduced form, and it can be recharged later on without uh, receiving the proper nutrients, and glutathione can be uh, used again. So glutathione really is a unique type of an antioxidant. It's endogenous. You make it. It's not exogenous like vitamin C and vitamin E. You have to eat those vitamins. We don't make vitamin C and vitamin E or lipoic acid. We make glutathione. And uh, the abbreviation for glutathione is GSH. Uh, you can remember the gamma sulfhydryl group. Uh, and interestingly, uh, the glutathione molecule is so antioxidant that it can actually provide hydrogen back to exhausted vitamin C and recycle it, and back to exhausted vitamin E and recycle it, and, and, and so forth with the other antioxidants. like a big gear that as it passes and turns, it can recharge the other antioxidants. So it's really, out of all the antioxidants, the master antioxidant. And interestingly, your vitamins that you take uh, on a regular basis um, will be sustained uh, for many, many times longer in your body if you have sufficient amount of glutathione. If you have a low level of glutathione, these vitamins will be in and out in, uh, in a couple of hours. So uh, there's, uh, these are other benefits to having uh, high levels of glutathione. The system, though, is the critical aspect of how um, this affects cancer. As you know, the system's main function is to protect you from xenobiotics and foreign antigens. <coughs> These are things that are not supposed to be in your body. But uh, we have many of them that we have to fight. There's bacteria that are very scary today and viruses. Uh, we don't know when the next one will pop, uh, funguses and even parasites. Um, Parasites, can, when you're exposed to a parasite, such as a dust mite, if you have a strong immune system, uh, quite likely you're, you'll just shrug it off. But if you don't have a strong immune system and you laid your head down in a pillow where there's some dust mites or on a mattress where there's some dust mites, uh, they're too tiny for you to see. They eat human skin. Uh, while you could have a, uh, an asthma attack. Uh, whereas if you have a very strong immune system, uh, these are not going to affect you. But now here's the real benefit of a strong immune system. This is a macrophage that has been converted into a killer T cell, and it's been designed to eat a tumor cell. And I'm sure you, you will agree that this is a good way to get rid of cancer. Have your own immune system, eat it. And of course, uh, then it... Uh, it's, uh, it's removed through the waste mechanism uh, on a daily basis. This is indeed the secret to staying cancer free. It's having an immune system that has the ability to rev up to any amount of T cells based on the amount of cancer cells that may be in the body. Unfortunately, we can have a lot of cancer cells. You could have on an average a million cancer cells. And uh, you could form cancer cells at a very rapid rate, uh, even eating certain types of foods. Uh, however, it's very critical that you have glutathione available because you cannot make more T cells without the availability of glutathione. In fact, uh, uh, it produces what's called monoclonal expansion of T cells. Uh, once the... Uh, the body recognizes a, uh, a factor that it has to destroy, like a cancer cell. It'll design a special killer T cell, and that T cell, if necessary, will clone itself into hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, billions. It all depends on the availability of glutathione. Now, you would think that you would have heard this before, right? Those of you who are listening in, think to yourself, how, how many of you have ever heard the word glutathione in the whole time you went to school? Uh, it's really been something that just has been unknown. And uh, you would particularly think that with regards to fighting cancer, that uh, an oncologist would tell you about this. Well, it's going to be hard to find. Uh, but some of the world's leading researchers have uh, 
made bold statements that uh, this glutathione and cystine deficiency is at the root of most wasting states, Dr. Wolf Droga. The limiting factor for the function and clonal expansion of lymphocytes is the availability of glutathione, Dr. Bunos. Dr. Gutman, it's food for the immune system. Now, um, before we go into more details about cancer, let's just uh, talk about another thing that can help prevent cancer, and that is detoxification. Obviously, uh, the main organ in the body that detoxifies is, uh, is the liver. However, the liver can be uh, very greatly damaged by modern-day drugs. For instance, Tylenol, which is otherwise known as Adisol or Paracetamol or Panadol, it has the ability to destroy your liver in short order. In fact, uh, in Europe, uh, Tylenol or acetaminophen overdose is uh, the cause of quite a bit uh, of suicide. A 10 extra strength Tylenol, a glass of scotch, you'll be dead in 96 hours. However, if they find out the next day that uh, you did this or if you change your mind, you go to an emergency room, they can raise your glutathione levels and it'll detoxify the acetaminophen inside the liver and save your life. Now, how does this work? Well, the doctors inject you with a, uh, a synthetic form of cystine. It's called N-acetylcystine, probably with 40,000 uh, units. Now, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's a pretty hefty drug. It uh, can make you nauseous and throw up within a, the first minute you've had the injection. But it, uh, it goes to work. It goes right to the liver. It encourages the liver to start upregulating glutathione. The glutathione detoxifies the Tylenol. It saves your life. Now, most doctors know to make the injections, but they're not aware that it's the glutathione that's actually the thing that actually saved the person's life. Uh, toxins and uh, heavy metals, carcinogens on a daily basis. Uh, you ladies probably used acetone to get your fingernail polish off, but it also goes to your liver. Uh, when it comes to uh, nitrosamines, uh, they're heavily in smoked foods and salami and hot dogs, barbecued foods, fuel exhaust, cigarette smoke. Uh, but the heavy metals are now causing a uh, uh, a big complication now. Some of these heavy metals are airborne now, particularly mercury. Some uh, industries that uh, vaporize mercury uh, were ignorant of the fact that it travels in jet streams and they're finding mercury in pristine lakes up uh, in areas like Maine uh, or over in, uh, in the Yellowstone National Park. Uh, amazing that it can get into these these pristine areas, but it's it's apparently being airborne. Uh, anyway, all of these things are able to be ameliorated by glutathione. It can actually liquefy and detoxify your these different things so that uh, they're removed from your body. And of course, it's good news for us because on a daily basis, you know, we're walking in and out of areas with uh, secondhand cigarette smoke. Our children may accidentally uh, handle fertilizer in the backyard or ant poison. Uh, the, the large cities, if you live near a large city, you by definition are going to be burning up glutathione because it's trying to protect you and your lungs from uh, the pollution. Uh, the mercury that's uh, in foods, particularly fish, uh, are alleviated by this. Then we've got uh, the sprays that uh, are on the foods. And of of course, as much as I like barbecued food, and hate to tell you this, but uh, barbecued foods are probably 20 times more carcinogenic than foods cooked on a, a stove. And then there's the, uh, the, the uh, processed meats and the chemicals that uh, the housewives have to use to clean the house. All of this winds up going through the skin, getting into the, into the liver, and uh, the vast amount of car traffic, even tap water today, it's got so much in it. They now rate tap water in uh, levels of toxicity. Uh, I was reading an article that uh, New Mexico broke all the records. Anybody uh, listening in tonight from New Mexico? 
Well, you should be aware of the fact that New Mexico had 1,600 EPA violations just last year alone. Uh, because there's, there's not much they can do. They just got bad water and they're not able to, uh, to fix it. Now, glutathione is one of the components inside the cell. And of course, uh, you can see it here in this drawing, GSH. Now, the oxyradicals are formed inside the cell, these OH molecules, by a number of different things, particularly the, form, the uh, complex uh, making of energy, uh, adenosine triphosphate. Now, on its own, uh, glutathione will pass off hydrogen to these oxyradicals and will neutralize them. And the cell uh, will then slough them off through the uh, membrane and it will go out through the waste system. If you don't have enough of the glutathione, then you're opening the whole cell uh, to being damaged by uh, these things that have been discussed. For instance, uh, some toxins or some carcinogens or heavy metals. <clears throat> Let's say that a toxin breaks through the wall of the cell and damages a few strands of the DNA. Well, what has happened? That cell has now mutated. It's, it's not going to be able to uh, successfully reproduce itself as a normal cell. When it splits and forms another cell, you've got two mutated cells. And when those two mutated cells split, you've got four mutated cells. And then you split again, you've got eight mutated cells. From there, it goes to 16. And uh, it goes to 32. It goes to 64. It goes to 128. And you know what happens ultimately in uh, a couple of months? Uh, you've got the fundamental origins of tumor. And it all started with one cell. Now, this was not something that was readily recognized by, by scientists in, in recent years, that that one cell could be the key to killing you. Because if you don't have protection in every cell of your body, this can happen. And it's, uh, it's, it's dramatic. Now, there's an interesting anomaly that takes place when you dramatically push your body to increase glutathione. It actually has the opposite effect on cancer. Now, <clears throat> it's surprising to some people to know that cancer has unusual amounts of, uh, of glutathione. Why is that? Well, <clears throat> in, a, in a healthy, normal cell, the, the cell is uh, very tightly regulating the production of glutathione. You cannot overdose glutathione. You can only make so much. And if your body needs, if your cell needs to make some more, then as long as the nutrients are available to the cell, the cell will uh, make this additional glutathione and maximize it in that cell. <clears throat> well, now when the cell uh, mutates, it loses that uh, self-regulating aspect, and so the glutathione begins to 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 grow in a in a in a, a dangerous level. Uh, in fact, uh, it's very very hard for the body to kill uh, these cancer cells because the cancer cells have uh, uh, such a strong drive, and they uh, they need oxygen uh, so dramatically, and uh, they have this extra protection of the glutathione. So uh, it's interesting to note, though, that the opposite happens when you push your body to make more glutathione. It has the opposite effect. Now, some people might think, wow, I, I better not make more glutathione. It'll make the cancer grow faster. Well, it, it doesn't. It actually produces negative feedback inhibition, and the cancer cells begin to downregulate glutathione, and the healthy cells begin to upregulate it. So now you've got the good cells getting stronger, the cancer cells getting weaker, and the immune system itself can now play a big role in helping you fight the cancer. And isn't that something that is uh, music to your ears? Uh, right now, the, the current uh, treatment of choice by doctors is, uh, is using heavy doses of radiation and uh, 
and using chemotherapeutic agents. Well, in 40 years, in the last 40 years, they have not changed the statistics on treating cancer with these, these two uh, modalities at all. So it's very interesting to know that now there's a possibility of simply doing glutathione enhancement therapeutically and that actually can help the body be able to put up a, a strong fight against cancer. Uh, same thing happens in the liver. If you've got good levels of glutathione, the, 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 the liver will detoxify many of these carcinogenic things that would cause cancer in the first place. So it all works uh, holistically and synergistically to keep your body healthy. So very, very powerful to uh, recognize that the to toxic waste neutralizer of the body is glutathione. Now just in passing, we'll mention also the other uh, benefit. Uh, there's multiple examples from the molecular level to sports performance that if you increase glutathione, the energy complex is enhanced. You have more energy. Your performance is enhanced. Um, inside of the cell, if uh, the OH molecules or the oxy radicals are not um, neutralized by glutathione, they sometimes steal hydrogen from the mitochondria. Now that's not going to be a healthy thing for the mitochondria. That'll make the mitochondria not produce as much energy as it could. And so um, there's strong evidence that some of the uh, mitochondrial diseases, such as uh, chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, are glutathione deficient states. And there's research ongoing right now in this uh, regard. But I can tell you this from personal experience, uh, when individuals with these uh, maladies have raised their glutathione levels, it's been uh, quite dramatic, the uh, improvement uh, in, in their energy levels. A study was done in McGill University, uh, and it showed that um, in 90 days, healthy young men in their 20s had a 13% increase in muscle strength and endurance, whereas the placebo group had zero. So. Uh, Really, there's some strong documentation that shows that um, this happens. And now recently, it's been discovered that uh, you can't have modulation of muscle tissue without the availability of cystine. Because cystine is a critical ingredient to the formation of muscle. So uh, as you age, it's particularly important to have cystine supplemented uh, so that you're not going to lose muscle. Uh, Dr. Droga, in his recent book, um, Avoiding the First Cause of Death, uh, documents the fact that uh, once you get into your 40s and 50s and 60s, uh, your body will steal the cystine from the muscle while you're sleeping at night to make the all-important glutathione. And so another uh, bane uh, of old age is the fact that you're losing muscle tissue uh, along with your glutathione levels. Well, uh, anti-aging is the uh, final aspect. Uh, Ops in your 40s and 50s, plummets. Um, and James? This would be more Hi, James. Uh, likely to develop diabetes, age onset diabetes. Hi, James. And uh, Hi, James. can you hear me now? Yes, uh, but I, I think we need to, uh, it went blank for a while um, after you talked about anti-aging. So if you could just uh, rewind a little bit and uh, yeah, from there. Uh, Oh no! You, Start with anti-aging. No, not that far back. That last slide you were on okay. said something. Uh, okay, start with anti-aging. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, now there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, tremendous uh, research that's been done on anti-aging. Um, Dr. Leonard Hayflick, of course, used to scoff at the notion of anti-aging. Uh, his test and the studies back in 1964 showed that uh, the cell could only split 50 times and after that it died. 
Uh, in fact, they named the discovery after him. It's called the Hayflick Limit. But uh, we now know that uh, glutathione begins to drop off at uh, in your 20s and precipitously in your 40s and 50s. And this tends to get aging. Um, now, ultimately, a person uh, will eventually oxidize completely and, and die. Uh, the exception to this, this rule is that someone living over the age of 95 or the oldest old seems to have very high levels of glutathione. And subsequently, uh, they may have done a life. And we could discuss that on another occasion. We're going to focus on. Uh, probably aging in another webinar and go into even even greater detail about it. But uh, elderly inpatients in hospitals have the lowest amount of glutathione. This was found in a study done by Fletcher and Fletcher published in The Lancet. The outpatients have twice as much and healthy elderly have the highest levels of glutathione. And it's possible with glutathione modulation and glutathione therapy to actually bring your glutathione levels from that of a healthy elderly person to that of a young person within a very short period of time. So this is something that can be actually done, and it can be done on a regular basis. So you remember these uh, five things. Glutathione is an idea. Antioxidant, immune support, detoxification, energy and anti-aging. And we'll spend more time on, on, on these things as time goes by in some of our future seminars. Now glutathione is impacted on a daily basis by a number of things. Uh, as I mentioned, drugs like Tylenol and, and others uh, can lower glutathione. Your diet can, uh, particularly if you eat a lot of uh, barbecued foods or fried foods, it can lower glutathione. Uh, if you injure yourself, have trauma or burns, if you have high levels of stress, if you're fighting an infection, if your pollution is very high in the area you live, and also the aging and uh, radiation. If you're in, uh, in the sun a lot, uh, it's been found that airline pilots have the highest levels of prostate cancer among men. Airline stewardesses have the highest levels of breast cancer among women. So all of these things combine to lower glutathione levels, and of course, this creates higher levels of oxidative stress, free radical damage, and toxic buildup. So to prevent this depletion, it's very critical uh, that you restore the glutathione. Otherwise, your the cellular aging uh, will increase. Disease and death will come earlier. Uh, and by the way, this has a big impact on uh, premature cellular death, which is now being experienced in, uh, in huge quantity by people with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So it's very important to have this in the brain. Now remember, glutathione can't be raised by eating glutathione. Sad to say, they sell it in stores to this day. They still sell oral glutathione, and it's a, quite a waste of money. I wouldn't recommend you even buy it. Uh, there's no clinical trials that show any enhancement of glutathione by eating it. You have to make it. And so the cells really uh, need the precursors. Uh, these, this is the nutrients that are the building blocks for you to be able to make glutathione. And uh, we uh, are going to discuss the precursors a little bit. Uh, again, the three amino acids that you need are glycine, glutamate, and cysteine. But the glycine and the glutamate are quite common. In fact, uh, it's been said you could eat a, a Big Mac and probably get all the, the glycine and glutamate you need for the day, but the cysteine is the one that's critical. Now, there are some drugs that are known to raise glutathione levels, uh, such as NAC, SAM, OTC, OTZ, and GSH monoesters. Um, one word about N-acetylcysteine, it's very commonly found in an oral form in health food stores. Uh, and it's used in a, in a drip form and an injectable form also in hospitals. But uh, while we would recommend it for emergency use, um, 
really it's not to be used for long-term use. It, uh, it, it's a toxic substance. The body, the side effects, and in fact, some instances, uh, anaphylactic shock has resulted in death. Now, this is probably the number one way uh, uh, people are being misled into raising glutathione levels today. So be cautious about n acetylcysteine. Um, SAMe, also known as uh, S adenosyl methionine, is uh, able to be converted to cysteine. And uh, it's used in a treatment of cirrhosis. Remember, if a person drinks a lot, it burns down the glutathione in the liver. It can cause cirrhosis. Uh, it's expensive, and the side effects uh, at uh, what we call therapeutic doses can include dry mouth, agitation, and gastrointestinal uh, problems. Uh, OTC and OTZ are synthetic delivery sources, but they require a certain enzyme that is not present in all tissue, and so the value of it is limited. It's not ready, readily available to the general public or even to all doctors, but it is uh, to be mentioned that it can raise glutathione. Now, the GSH monoesters and diesters are compounds which can be also metabolized into alcohol, so it has, this is cutting a sword. And uh, the long-term use of the uh, GSH monoesters and diesters are, are really questionable. Now, there's some natural products that can raise glutathione. We already discussed oral glutathione and, and cysteine. L-cysteine has very limited ability to get through the stomach. Uh, it actually... Uh, well, we'll break it down and, and, and talk a little bit about it, um, each one of these. Uh, again, oral glutathione, not able to raise glutathione levels. In fact, some research shows that people that ate glutathione actually had lower levels of glutathione, so to be avoided. Now, the cysteine um, can raise glutathione minimally. It's easily oxidized in the digestive system and it's passed as waste. But if you take a lot of it, you because it's potentially toxic, you could uh, develop hypercystinemia. And it can further oxidize in the bloodstream, uh, causing some additional byproducts. Methionine, um, at certain doses, can be toxic. It's, it's a precursor also for homocysteine, which is uh, the antithesis of cysteine. And so it puts you at high risk for atherosclerosis. Again, these are ways to raise glutathione. Melatonin is not a bad uh, adjunct. It's a natural hormone, and antioxidant, and um, there is particularly a product I'd recommend. It's called Montmorency Cherry Concentrate. Uh, the Montmorency Cherry Concentrate is uh, it's very hard to find, um, and it's expensive, but uh, it raises melatonin inside the brain. So if, if somebody were fighting uh, uh, cancer in the brain, uh, along with glutathione enhancement, the melatonin will also be uh, uh, able to help raise it in the brain. Also, it helps you sleep very well. So those of you who need uh, help sleeping, that's, uh, that's a good adjunct also. Now, glutamine has uh, uh, an abundant supply in the body. And it's one of the three amino acids needed. Generally, you don't need it. Um, it's available in all the food groups. Um, and so if you took glutamine on its own, it could give you some gastrointestinal upset. Uh, and if you have kidney or liver problems, you might want to be careful also with glutamine. And uh, lipoic acid is uh, a helpful antioxidant. I also recommend it, uh, although it's not necessary to take it in high doses. But it helps convert the oxidized uh, GSSG back into the reduced form GSH. So it's very beneficial for, for protecting against uh, lipid peroxidation. Now you're going to see milk thistle in a lot of different nutrients. Um, it, uh, 
in a, in a small way, is able to uh, to raise glutathione. It's been used many many years. Um, it's not a regulated product, so you don't know for sure how much milk thistle you're going to get when you you buy milk thistle. But it does have benefits, so milk thistle should not be ruled out. Uh, side effects could include gastronomical distress. Now, whey proteins probably are the number one uh, way to get. Uh, glutathione enhancement. The problem is you need to have specially produced proteins. Unless they're specially uh, produced and undenatured, uh, they'll not be bioactive and they will not likely elevate glutathione. And unfortunately, there's uh, many, many uh, health food stores that put big tubs of whey proteins out and they, they write right on it, undenatured. Now, I've gone and I've purchased a lot of these, in fact, even from some very reputable companies. And I've uh, had them tested and I found that they were indeed denatured, uh, hydrolyzed, and not in any way going to uh, raise glutathione. So you have to be cautious. Um, there are um, some bioactive whey proteins, uh, like Immunical, which is the one I primarily recommend. Uh, it preserves undenatured proteins, has the highest level of glutathione promoting activity. It's produced pharmaceutically, so they take out all the stuff that normally normal normally people are allergic to. For instance, uh, they take out the lactose, and they take out casein, and they take out fat. Uh, so these things, uh, even if you're very allergic, you don't have any problems with Immunical. It's uh, in fact it's patented as a chemotherapeutic agent. Now that's very interesting because uh, because it's recognized as as a, as a means to optimize glutathione, then this produces a chemotherapeutic effect. Imagine, the world's first all-natural chemotherapy. And uh, basically, it doesn't get you sick at all. There's no side effects. There's no contraindications. It's the safest, effective way to raise and sustain glutathione. Now, I, I suggest that you um, also take these particular nutrients, selenium, Vitamins B1, B2, B6, B12, folic acid, C, E, magnesium, vanadium, and zinc. Um, also vitamin D, we could probably add that in there. Now there's foods that can raise glutathione, but again, trace amounts. You have to eat raw broccoli, about a truckload. You'd have to eat a, a dozen raw eggs, but you've got to be careful for the salmonella. We don't recommend that. Raw steak and raw fish, but again, there's uh, bacteria in the in the meats, and in the case of uh, sushi, you got to be careful for the mercury now that's in the fish. The uh, absolute best source is found in mother's milk, uh, and in, in point of fact, the uh, discovery by Dr. Bunos of that protein powder led to the development of of Immunical, and uh, he found that. Uh, the uh, isolated proteins that he was able to derive from bovine milk precisely match the uh, makeup uh, physiologically of human mother's milk. Uh, now it takes a lot more cow milk than mother's milk to make the same amount of precursors. You might go through a, one or two gallons of milk to make a handful of this, this powder. It has to be uh, raw. You cannot heat this above a certain temperature or it will kill the cystine. This is, this is a thermolabile uh, amino acid. So it takes a lot of milk to make a box of Immunical and uh, so it is that um, you're getting the, the purest, highest quality uh, protein. Now Immunitech has uh, their own dairy. These cows graze uh, free range and they eat mostly organic. There's no hormones ever been given to the herd, no antibiotics. Um, the proteins are extracted, the milk is left behind, it's a cold process, and so even uh, someone that has severe allergies doesn't have any problem. So the recommendation that, that we are making with regards to uh, being able to uh, protect yourself primarily uh, from cancer and also to uh, help you um, if you were uh, fighting cancer is to raise glutathione. 
That's the whole point of, uh, of this research. And so it is that uh, these glutathione precursors are uh, safe and effective. Uh, more than a million people have used this safely, and uh, it's actually been given all over the world. But particularly in North America, uh, Munical has been given six pharmaceutical patents. It's got uh, over 75 international patents. It's got dozens of clinical uh, medical studies that have been published and peer-reviewed. It's uh, recognized as a medicine in the PDR, in the Canadian Compendium of Drugs, and in the uh, Pharmacist Red Book of Prescription Products. It's uh, basically the only natural product in uh, uh, that is allowed to make a claim. And that is that it contains the precursors that allows you to make glutathione that sustains your immune system. Uh, it's Medicare and Medicaid reimbursed in many parts of the United States. And uh, prestigious doctors like Dr. Luke Montagnier has uh, been able to uh, include it uh, in some of his uh, books, like uh, his book on oxidative stress in cancer and uh, AIDS and neurodegenerative diseases. The whole, there's a whole chapter on Immunical, its application in AIDS and cancer. Now, we may on another occasion discuss AIDS. So there's lots of different subjects and, uh, that, that we're going to discuss in the weeks and months ahead with regards to glutathione. I recommend glutathione.org if you want to get uh, some real research done on glutathione. And uh, that gives you an overview of the benefits of uh, glutathione with uh, cancer. Uh, so we, you want to open it up for uh, questions uh, and answers, uh, Dr. David? Absolutely, absolutely. A wonderful presentation. Again, thank you, James. Uh, folks, go ahead and type in your questions. And if you're new uh, to this, just remember you can type in questions in the top right section of our of this uh, of your screen. There should be a a floating panel there. All right, James, quite a few questions have already come in, uh, but I had a specific question myself. I know you've, you've not mentioned anything about um, glutathione and uh, brain enhancements, although you did allude to brain cancer. To, uh, for people who have been compromised by a stroke or uh, uh, a, a trauma to the brain, what's the, what's the place of glutathione enhancement here in, in such, such circumstances? Well, first of all, um, I would suggest that if a person does have a stroke, that they try to get some glutathione enhancement uh, immediately. Uh, now, obviously, you want to get to a hospital right away because there are some drugs that can help ameliorate the uh, stroke uh, very rapidly. But the, um, the damage that is caused by the stroke actually occurs after the stroke, more so than during the, during the actual stroke that is occurring. And it's almost like a ripple or a wave effect that emanates out from that. And that's where raising glutathione can have a pronounced uh, benefit. And that is to slow down this, uh, this, this extra damage that is caused by the stroke itself. Now, uh, what you really want to do is you want to prevent the future occurrence of more strokes. And so that would be a very strong reason to recommend a very strong protocol of glutathione enhancement. Because as you raise glutathione and uh, do this over a period of time, it helps to uh, uh, drop this uh, oxidative stress uh, in, throughout the body. So you're, you're not forming plaque at a rate. And so the benefits are very, very good. Great, great, great. And um, so timing is of the essence, pretty much, right? Yes. You get to the hospital right away, and in the, in the hours or in days ahead, uh, load up on either Immunical or one of these other forms of glutathione enhancement. Makes sense. And do you, did you have a, a, a phone number people can call in if they need to uh, try this out? Yes. Um, in fact, uh, let me give that number. It's 800. Um, 
Those eight hundred seven seven nine two eight three seven. Um, if uh, if someone wants to have some some personal questions asked, they don't want to necessarily go into detail. Did not uh, leave your name, phone number on the uh, uh, on that eight hundred number. You can leave that information, and we'll call you back, and uh, we'll answer those questions and uh, and help you. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Questions, uh, where did this statistic on the success rate over the last 40 years uh, come from? I guess he's referring to the cancer, uh, the cancer statistics. It says, he says, cancer societies around the world boast of modern near cures and higher remission cure rates with modern treatment. Which is, which is it? Is it, is it? is this accurate or is it not accurate? That's not accurate. You can... You can actually go to PubMed and uh, just do a little research, and uh, the statistics uh, have improved very little uh, over the last 40 years. Okay. All right. Uh, how many packs? Okay, if someone is in, I'm not sure this is a good question to ask, but you, you just use your discretion here. But how many packs should one take of platinum glutathione while in rem remission? Well. Um, through a lot of research, uh, we found that uh, approximately a pouch of Immunical is, uh, is able to basically keep your glutathione levels uh, normalized uh, up to the age of 40. Over the age of 40, we suggest you take two pouches. Um, uh, recently, uh, Immunical uh, had a, uh, an associate join it and it, this is called Immunical Platinum, and it has two additional formulas in it that have uh, some very specific benefits, um, and uh, this is something that I would recommend, particularly uh, over the age of 50, and uh, generally speaking, if a person is uh, very large in size, they might need to take an extra pouch because of size, I'd say 250 pounds, 225 pounds or, or, or larger, and if they have a health challenge that's uh, known to be an oxidative uh, health challenge, they may need to add a pouch uh, for that as well. So the amount that you take is going to fluctuate. It's going to vary depending on, on your circumstances. But when it comes to, um, to what you need for, for cancer um, protection, uh, you're probably going to need to start at about four pouches. And uh, if you're able to, you could probably do uh, half regular immunical and half platinum. Great. And, and what, what makes platinum? You said that's for people 40 and 50 or 50 and above. And what, what is so special about that? What, what does it have that the other one does not have? Come again? Uh, what is it about the platinum that makes it special? What does it have that the other, uh, the regular does not have? Well, the platinum has two additional formulas. It has one called cytokine modulating proteins, which has its own patent. And it's been shown to be um, uh, a, a naturally occurring protein that uh, has natural anti-inflammatory components. Um, and of course, this is something especially good for, for the body if it's, uh, if it's battling uh, cancer. Uh, also, it's got... Uh, another formula called redox modulating factors. And that was developed by Dr. Wolf Droga, one of the foremost uh, immunologists in the world. Uh, it has the ability to help reset the redox status in the cells. And so uh, it, it uh, slows down uh, apoptosis. Um, it, it helps prevent the loss of calcium as you get older. Uh, it helps uh, in the modulate the production of insulin, uh, just a tremendous amount of benefits. It can, it can cross the blood-brain barrier, so it help, it's helpful for the brain as well. Got it. That's great. Okay, how do you check glutathione levels? Is it by blood test? And also, where can ImmunoCal be purchased? Well, uh, you can call that 800 number, and uh, we'll be happy to... Uh, it's not easy to find. Uh, but we can we can help you get it, uh, and 
we can help you get it wholesale. Um, the uh, the cost of it, it ranges between two dollars, a little over two dollars for the regular, and about three dollars for the platinum. Um, one of the nice benefits is you can have your doctor prescribe it, and uh, you can write it off your taxes as a medical health care expense. Um, with the prescription, you can also have your uh, your employer sometimes has a health medical savings account, which can reimburse you for these uh, different. Uh, Uh, products that you get that uh, have a prescription. Okay, that's pretty impressive that uh, Medicare would re reimburse you for that. Pretty impressive. Yeah, actually, uh, Medicare is all 50 states, um, but it makes it difficult because uh, more recently Medicare has been stressed, and it's been uh, it's been saying that you have to be tube-fed uh, Immunical to get the reimbursement. Uh, the Medicaid is the better of the two, and, and in fact, there are some states where the state picks up the, the tab on Immunical. Um, in New York State, uh, I think the state will reimburse up to five boxes per person per month if you're fighting uh, AIDS or one of these other uh, wasting syndrome uh, diseases. I see. I see. Okay. Uh... Someone said, Lena wants this to be put on a CD. <laughs> okay. She loves it so much. All right. Uh, can someone who has had gastric bypass or lap band, lap band surgery still use Immunocal? Actually, uh, uh, the foremost magazine in the bariatric industry has now recommended and endorsed Immunocal uh, as probably one of the best things that someone with bariatric surgery could, could put on their lips. Because it uh, it liquefies the protein, it goes very easily through the uh, um, through the stomach. So yes, it'd be very highly recommended for that. Right, right. Uh, Michael has a really good question. Why is there so much GSH in the cancer cell? Well, if why didn't it prevent cancer in the first place if it was already in the cell? That's a great question. Well, the the problem is that the person probably got cancer in the first place because they had low levels of glutathione in their body. Now, once the cancer cells start, uh, start uh, forming and proliferating, uh, they tend to, uh, to steal the nutrients that would, uh, would be going to the healthy cells. Um, the healthy cells are struggling. And so when you uh, receive chemotherapy and radiation, uh, it's not the cancer cells dying that are giving the side effects like nausea and the hair falling out. It's actually the good cells that are being killed by the millions that are giving you all of these side effects. So um, the anomaly is that when you, you have to actually push the body dramatically uh, to go into negative feedback inhibition. And so um, and that, that starts at a, about four pouches or higher uh, with Immunical. And uh, at this point, now the, uh, the cells have the ability to uh, upregulate in the healthy cells, and it begins to downregulate in the cancer cells. Great. Uh, and just for those people who, who would like to, to view this again, and this is in answer to Alina, uh, we have put together a package uh, of um, James's two first presentations, glutathione and cancer and glutathione and diabetes, plus Dr. Gutman, who many of you know, and who is a very close friend of James, his presentations on cancer and glutathione in health and sickness. And I tell you, his presentation comes, from, uh, uh, comes at cancer from a totally different direction uh, than uh, James's does, and I think they, both of them will complement each other. We put this whole... The, these all these four presentations into one package, and we've sent you the link for that in your email. So just watch out for an email from Sherry Plex uh, um, about the series. I think it will be a good collection for you and for you to get better acquainted with uh, glutathione and immunocal. All right, how can glutathione, glutathione help persons with abnormal kidney and liver? Oh boy, both. How can well, for, first of all, uh, your liver 
is the highest uh, concentration of glutathione in your body. So if you're having low levels of glutathione, the liver is going to be the first organ that's going to be impacted. So it will also be the first one to benefit by raising uh, glutathione levels. Uh, kidneys also, a kidney function uh, and the balance uh, of the kidney is to a very gr great extent dependent on uh, glutathione. Now, there becomes a paradox, uh, as, as some people have liver damage and kidney damage, sometimes doctors tell them, well, you can't, you can't have much protein. Uh, but you don't want to have anyone convince you that, uh, that uh, you can't have some of this protein. Because uh, the bottom line is you can't live without protein. In fact, uh, uh, even someone that's protein restricted, the doctors still allow 60 to 80 grams of protein a day. Immunocal only has 9 grams of protein in a pouch. So if you, even if you took 4 pouches, that's only 36 grams of protein. And I would suggest you limit other proteins and make sure you get that immunocal protein because that is going to help. Uh, in fact, I, I've personally seen some people who were scheduled for uh, dialysis. And uh, the BUN and the creatinine levels got so much improved by them going on immunocal within a, a couple of weeks that the doctor canceled the order for dialysis. Oh, wow. So uh, very, very highly recommended for, for kidney and liver. And uh, we can get you additional information. You call in on the 800 number, leave your name and number. We'll, tell you, we'll be able to email information on that to you. James, give us that number again. Some people said they didn't hear it the first time. Okay, 800-779-2837. Okay, great. I, I'm going to send this to everyone as well, so you can all have it. All right, how can you check your glutathione levels and what are good levels to have? Did you get that? Well, you can check your uh, glutathione levels by doing a blood test. It's, it's, uh, it's found in the blood lymphocytes. And so you just have a doctor draw blood and send it to a lab. Now, not every lab has the, uh, has the ability to, to, to test glutathione. It has to be done with a spectrometer. Um, we can probably give you some labs uh, if you need. Um, a healthy amount of glutathione would be 600 parts per million in your, in your uh, lymphocytes. Um, so that's, that's, that's what you want to shoot for. But I can tell you this, that uh, people getting into their 50s and 60s, uh, it gets a lot lower than that. We, I, I saw a gentleman, uh, he was around 70 years of age. He only had 120 parts per million. And uh, we put him on uh, Immunical for about a month. He got his blood tested again, and it was up over 700 parts per million in one month. So he had the, he had the levels of a young person in one month. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, there's a great question on chemo. Taking it with chemo, some doctors say that the immunocal may interfere with the medicine. What effect does this have on chemo? None whatsoever. And uh, in point of fact, uh, glutathione doesn't impact any, any uh, known medications. And, and immunocal itself has got no contraindications except in the case of someone who's on a, um, on a anti, a, uh, uh, an immune suppressant drug. Now, if you're on a, an immunosuppressant drug because of an organ transplant, then you would want to be careful with immunocal. You may not be able to take that much of it. Um, but otherwise, there's no contraindications. It'll allow the chemotherapy to, as a matter of fact, it'll allow the chemotherapy to, to be even more effective because uh, it'll, it'll actually uh, lower the levels of glutathione in the cancer and let the chemo kill the cancer faster. So and there's a study that was done in, in Japan, and they end, at the end of the study, they recommended that this be a modality to go along with chemotherapy. Wow. It's, it's amazing how, how much validation this is getting. I'm, I'm really impressed with this. That's amazing. 
Uh, and there is a site people can go to to see the validation from th these different authorities, James? Is there a site people can yes, go to? Yes, uh, again, if they, they call in, we'll get, we'll get them uh, additional research and, and, and tell them where they can go to get, uh, and we can email a lot of it to them also. Some of it's very hard to find on the internet, but I've, I've got a vast uh, resource of this material. All right, glutathione and pain, and specifically back pain. Please ask if raising glutathione levels will help relieve pain of a herniated disc. Very dramatically. In fact, uh, uh, some people that have been a couple of weeks on Immunical, I, I got I to gotta counsel them not to go dancing because the disc is still damaged, but the inflammation is gone, and so they don't feel the pain. So it, it kind of it fools them into thinking they can do things they shouldn't. Huh. So it actually affects, I mean, actually affects your perception of pain or does it reduce inflammation? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it, it lowers the inflammation throughout your body. It lowers oxidative stress. That's, that's what, the, these are the things that causes pain. And so uh, a lot of people have greatly benefited with uh, uh, the lowering of pain once, once they're raising glutathione. All right, people with celiac disease, can they take it? Yes, absolutely. Um, now, it's not going to completely remove the celiac problem, but it can ameliorate it greatly. You're still going to need to be careful with gluten. Um, and there's, uh, we haven't done clinical trials on celiac per se, but, but uh, fundamentally it's, it's going to be beneficial from the, uh, the other studies that have been done associated with, uh, with that disease. Okay. I'd probably recommend also uh, the platinum for, for celiac disease. Okay. And Hashimoto's and uh, diabetes, all of these, you'll you'll be more a little more benefited with the platinum. Okay. And people are still asking where to get ImmunoCal, folks. I just sent you the the number. So check check that box to your top right. So the number that uh, uh, James gave. So you can um, call in afterwards. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of questions have been, um, lots of uh, comments saying thank you for an excellent presentation. This is fantastic. Good stuff. All right. R Renee wants to know, can we just juice and eat raw food? I know you've covered that, but go ahead. Well, if you can find organic um, um, broccoli and do several bushels a day, uh, That'll equal a, a pouch or two of Immunical. But if, uh, if you had to do uh, therapeutic doses, um, I don't think you could drink that much. I see. Yep. OK. Um, a question about toxicity. I know someone mentioned that uh, uh, with all the radiation from Japan and that fiasco. Um, isn't there a risk that even the, though the cows are not being given steroids and other things, that's, that, 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 that those radiation could contaminate their, their water and their food through the soil? Well, the, uh, the herd is located in Idaho, which is, has the lowest level of pollution in the United States and the highest levels of selenium in the soil. And so it's not by accident they, they decided to use that location. Um, and uh, they have never had hormone treatment or antibiotics, and we test every uh, you know every uh, production uh, that is made. So if there's anything out of the ordinary, we would find it. We would ref we would refuse it. So we would we would know in advance. Okay, great. Uh, now toxicity. What is there like an upper limit to how much how much immunocal you can take at once? Uh, we, should we be concerned about that? Well, the protein uh, in two pouches are, are quite easily uh, assimilated. So uh, we suggest that you take uh, two pouches at a time maximum. And if you're, you're at a higher dose for, for some particular health challenge, uh, then you know, wait a couple of two to four hours and take the other, the other uh, one or two pouches that you need to take. OK. All right, we're going to take a few more questions and wrap it up for tonight. Kim wants to know um, where I live in Ohio and I need to know which lab to have my glutathione levels checked. Thank you so, so very much. 
Okay, I'll I'll, uh, I'll take a look through my directory, and uh, she can call in, and we'll uh, we'll try to find something near her. Great. And uh, final one, Raul wants to know: Is spring allergy caused by low glutathione? Well, absolutely. In fact, all allergies probably are related to low levels of glutathione. Um, I've lost count of the thousands of people that I've I've seen who had severe allergies that uh, once they raised their glutathione levels, the allergies just disappeared. Because what happens is the allergies are based on your body having too many B cell lymphocytes and not enough T cell lymphocytes. And since uh, the glutathione specifically raises T cells, the T cells come up and balance out with the B cells and encapsulate the uh, the allergies and the autoimmune complications. So um, it's uh, quite dramatic and it usually happens in uh, two to four weeks. Wow. And I believe I saw in a video some some uh, the benefit of glutathione for uh, lung uh, lung problems, um, everything ranging from asthma to to the more severe things like um, pulmonary fibrosis. So it does help with respiratory respir respiratory conditions as well. I understand. Well, it's true. The um, infl inflammation of the lungs is one of the big causes of uh, pulmonary disorder. And so as you raise glutathione, it lowers that uh, inflammatory response and uh, starts to clear out the bronchial tubes and the, the lungs breathe better and everything gets better. Uh, so it's very, very dramatically good for the pulmonary system. It's amazing how inflammation is, is linked to so many other kinds of conditions. It's amazing. That's just amazing. All right. Well, this has been fantastic again. I'm I'm so glad you were able to do this, and I'm so glad we didn't have, we didn't have the interruptions we had last time, Jeff. That's crazy last time. Well, I'm thinking maybe we should uh, try to talk about glutathione and heart disease on our next uh, our next uh, webinar, which maybe we can do in a couple of weeks. That sounds great. Sounds great. You want to pick a pick a time now, or we just talk about it later, later on? Yeah, we'll we'll uh, settle on a time, and then you can email it out later sounds good sounds good all right here's a final a, a final comment it's not a question Kim is saying well, my oncologist is amazed on how I have done while taking glutathione enhancement he actually is shocks and shocked and calls me Wonder Woman I had stage 3 cancer and now in complete remission and will always take this product love Kim okay well, that's a great way to end this <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks for listening in, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, thanks for sponsoring the program tonight, uh, Dr. David. And uh, I'm sure that as time goes by, we'll be able to get into much more detail on many different subjects. And so uh, these folks can look forward to those occasions. Absolutely. And thank you, James, for doing this. Appreciate it. All right, folks, have a good night. God bless. We'll see you on Thursday, by the way. Thursday, Helen, uh, Helen Erlen is going to be talking about reading uh, dysfunctions and learning dysfunctions, and she is a world-renowned authority in the whole field of visual perception and visual stress, and she has, she's doing a lot of great work. So be sure to uh, register for that on Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. And that ends it for tonight. God bless. Have a great night. Bye.